Blender 4.1 is now in its last month of alpha, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to take five minutes to take a look at what's new in geometry nodes. We have four new nodes and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nodes with changes. Six of those have been updated with the new rotation socket. These six, which join the updated nodes from 4.0, all now blushing pink in the land of the Quaternion. Next up in our changed node list is Set Curve Normal, which now has a free mode. This allows a curve to have custom normals set on it. I'm demonstrating this by instancing a curve line on a curve line, aligning the instances to its normals, which I'm wiggling like there isn't a care in the world. You know what they say, if you love your normals, set them free. The Fill Curve node, not to be mistaken for the Phil Collins node, now has a Group ID input, so we can control which curve forms a fill with which. Without the Group ID input, Fill Curve will try to fill them all together, creating the worst superhero logo imaginable. But using the index as the Group ID, Fill Curve creates three faces, one for each index. Next, the Musgrave Texture node is no more having been replaced by the Extended Noise Texture node, which makes me nervous because if it starts eating up nodes at an exponential rate, I might have to build a shelter. The Active Camera Input node is going to let us create systems driven by the Active Camera. I'm using Instance on Points to instance a collection of increasingly subdivided Suzannes onto a grid. Then calculating the distance of the camera from each instance, mapping the distance to pick which model is used for each instance, so that the high poly Suzannes, red, are closest to the active camera, and the low poly lumps, purple, are far, far away. Changing the active camera automatically shifts the focus of our system. We can even make our Suzannes stare directly at the camera just like the woman who lives in your walls does at you at 3.33 every morning. Next up on this noodle journey, we have the Bake node. For those who believe that everything is better baked, you can save the evaluations of complex node trees to disk, offloading them so you don't have to be constantly processing them in real time. Which is a bit like how therapy is supposed to work, but I wouldn't know because I'm too busy yelling. Split to instances splits geometry into multiple pieces as defined by the group ID. Here, I'm taking a mesh with 1,500 faces and turning it into one instance. But if I use index for the group ID, I get 1,500 instances because each face has a unique ID. Split to instances is a very powerful node that can be used to make things like this I don't really know what it is, but I do know that I really like it. And last, and oh so definitely not least, the index switch, which has had something of a hero's welcome round here, and we'll need to take a look at the original switch to understand why. Back in the before time, when all there was was the original switch, we could only switch between two things, true or false. And if we wanted to reflect the fact that the world wasn't indeed governed by such polar opposite absolutes, we'd have to build complex trees like this. 10 additional nodes, just to ask nicely. So that's why the index switch is such a cause for celebration, because you can plug into it as many things as you want, or Blender lets you, and use the index number of those things to switch between them. And there we are, the new nodes in Blender 4.1 Alpha as of January the 8th, 2024. A fresh and functional set of rectangular graduates ready for you to make magic with. And who knows what'll happen between now and release. I mean, it is 2024 after all. <laughs>